I must thank the Lord for that um, song ministration from our mommy, Dickness Femi. Thank you so much for being a blessing to us again. Why not tonight? If you want salvation, if you must be saved, why not now? I'm trusting the Lord that he's going to bring us his world again um, this day. It's a great a blessing for us to come your way one more time this day on this online Bible study. My name is Sheikh Mario. One more time, I'm from Porter's House Christian Mission, a non denominational Christian mission. I trust the Lord that you will join with us tonight or today as we look at the Word of God together. Shall we please bow our heads as we pray together? Eternal Father, we want to thank you and appreciate you for another time in your presence. Thank you for this great privilege that you have given to us. Thank you for our people watching us at different points, Facebook, uh, YouTube, 
and listening via MixLR. Thank you so much for this great opportunity. And I ask, Lord, please receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, this evening, we are pleading with you that you will please come speak to us. We require that your spirit will speak to us, that to prosper in the hearts of every man and every woman that will listen to this. We trust that, Lord, at the end of this um, discussion, we'll have great reasons to give praise unto your name. Thank you, Father. We know that each time we pray according to your will, you hear it us. And this is the guarantee that we already have our petition. For we have prayed with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome you one more time to this online Bible study. And I trust that God in his mercy is going to bring his word across to you and I. And that that word as I prayed will prosper in our hearts. Tonight, we are going to um, study together um, the gospel and religion. Um, last week, I did mention that Christianity is not, is not a religion. And I don't want you to make that mistake of thinking that Christianity is um, a religion. But today... Um, I'm going to, I don't know how many um, weeks I will spend on this aspect. Don't forget that we started to look at repentance. We look at the divine nature of repentance. And we have been looking at that matter up until last week. So last week we were looking at um, repentance and the gospel. Because we know that if any repentance that we bring salvation, it must be on the heels of the gospel. It must stand on the gospel. It must, it must take its root in the gospel. It must spring from the gospel. And it is um, looking at the gospel that made us to know that um, the gospel, which is now called Christianity, is not religion. And that's why it is the only power that can save a man from sin. Because religion can only deal with activities of sin, not with the nature of sin. It can only deal with the, with the leaves and the branches of sin. It cannot deal with the root of sin. And that's why we have come this far. And so I'm going to read the book of Galatians, chapter number 3. It's going to be our main text. I should normally read verses 1 to 29, but I won't read that much today because I'm still going to um, come back there and read possibly next week God's sparing our lives. I'm going to read from verses 1, and I'm going to read up until verse 12 today and maybe next week i will read the rest now i'm going to read it from the old king james translation but the golden text just say about two three verses that we form our golden text is going to come in the message translation but i'm going to read the text itself in the old king james translation all right all foolish galatians who hath bewitched you that ye should not spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet are the children of Abraham and the scripture for seeing that God will justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel 
unto Abraham. Please take note. Saying, in thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Verse 12. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. I am mindful of time. I will have read beyond this point but just like i promise when we come back by god's grace next class i will be reading beyond this point but i like you to take note of what i have read i may not be able to start to deal with each of the verses i mean each of this passage that have verses of this passage as I've just read it now. However, there are few of those verses that I may need to highlight in the course of this discussion today. Don't forget, we are looking at the gospel and religion. Permit me to read the golden text, and we can be on the same page because the media people will put it on your screen so that you can read the exact thing I am reading, and then we can flow together. And I'm going to read Galatians chapter 3, verses 17 to 19, in the message translation. It's going to be our golden text. It's going to be our, our focal passage of the scripture. This is the way I interpret this. A will... He earlier ratified by God is not annulled by an addendum attached 430 years later, thereby negating the promise of the will. No. This addendum with its instructions and regulations has nothing to do with the promised inheritance in the will. What is the point then of the law? The attached addendum. It was a thoughtful addition to the original covenant promises made to Abraham. The purpose of the law was to keep a sinful people in the way of salvation unto Christ, the descendant, that is the seed, came, inheriting the promises and distributing them to us. Hallelujah. Obviously, the law was not a first-hand encounter with God. It was arranged by angelic messengers through a middleman, Moses. May the Lord bless this word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. I am going to, to understand the angle from which we are coming, looking at the gospel and religion. Now, I'm going to read the foreword so as to have a focus and so as to run on the lane 
at some point I may pause and draw some issues that does not save from sin, cannot confer or impute righteousness, neither does he make anyone inherit eternal life as the faith of Christ, now called Christianity, does. If you, if you follow the passages I have read, you will see, especially from the golden text, even though I didn't read up to that point in the, in the text that I read, the old King James Version, but you will see in the text that I read, our golden text from the message translation, you will notice that Paul was talking about an addendum that was added to the covenant. It was a thoughtful addition, that is the law, and that it was this thoughtful uh, addition which was added to the original covenant made to Abraham that was made so that the sinful people of Israel could be kept in shape, could be kept on course until Christ the seed that was promised in the garden, which we are going to see, will come and inherit the promise. That seed, Jesus Christ, is the Son of God, and being the Son of God, gave him the right to inherit the promise, and because he inherited the promise, he could distribute it to all that believe or those that received him as their savior. Now, I am not there yet. I am going to get there and discuss it. If not in this study, maybe next one. But I'd like you to follow as I read. So, we have found out that religion can regulate activities of man. But we know that the problem of man is not in what he does, but in who he is. That a man is committing sin, or a man is fornicating, is into adultery, is into robbery, is into banditry. Those activities are coming from the person that he is. Jesus said, a good fruit, a good tree, cannot bear evil fruit. So when you see a tree bearing evil fruit, it is not the fruit actually. It is because that tree itself is, is evil, is corrupt. So when you see a man committing an atrocity, that atrocity is a big problem. But that's not where the problem is. The problem is in who he is. Religion can regulate our activities. You must observe this speed limit when you are driving. When you are driving, don't drink. Religion can regulate all of that. But it doesn't stop that man from drinking. He will only not drink for fear of the law while he's driving. But that does not mean that he is not a drunkard. No. So... We know that religion cannot deal with sin, cannot deal with the root of sin to a, the point of expunging it and setting the victim free. Religion lacks that capacity. We saw it in our last study. So I'd like to move on, move on. We need to reiterate the fact that religion of whatever brand or ground has consistently shown its incapacitation, inadequacies, and ineffectiveness to combat and defeat the main cause of enmity between God and man, which is sin. Therefore, religion cannot be trusted now 
to help any man. And I'm going to read Galatians chapter 2, verses 15, 16, and 19. I'm going to read it in the message translation. The media people will be of tremendous help to bring it to your own um, um, view as I read from here. Paul was writing to the brethren in Galicia, and he, and he wrote, We Jews know that we have no advantage of birth over non-Jewish sinners. There is no advantage of birth. The Jewish sinners and the non-Jewish sinners are sinners. Sinner, I mean, sin has no nationality. It's universal. And that's the truth. Now, can I read further? We know very well that we are not set right um, by God. We're not set right with God by rule keeping, but only through personal faith in Jesus Christ. Now, here was a Jew talking. And he was telling the Galatians and telling you and I that there was no bad advantage they had over other nations of the earth, both as sinners. They had tried in their own way, but they couldn't make it. Their righteousness or right living is not coming from the fact that their laws made them so. No, they say it is by personal faith in Jesus Christ that brought the new life that the Galatians found in a sample, permit me, a sample like Paul. They met Paul and few of the brethren and they saw this massive difference in their lives. And Paul was bringing the secret behind that life that it is not by rule keeping they attain that height. It is by personal faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I want to read further. How do we know? We tried it and we had the best system of rules the world has ever seen. Convinced that no man, no human being can please God by self-improvement, we believed in Jesus as the Messiah so that we might be set right before God by trusting in the Messiah, not by trying to be good. We believe the Messiah. We believe Jesus as the Messiah. We believe in him. And it is by trusting him we attain that great height. Now I want to say to you, this is, this is beyond what religion can do. Religion will tell you to try. They say no. We didn't attain this life by trying to be good. We simply attain it by exercising our faith in Jesus, we believe in Jesus as the Messiah. And by trusting in this Messiah, we attain the height that look very unattainable before we exercise that faith. Now, can I read further? Now, verse 19. What actually took place is this. I tried keeping rules and walking my head off to please God. And it didn't work. So I quit being a lawman so that I could be a God's man. Hey, wait. this is beautiful. I stopped being a lawman. I quit struggling to obey the law so that I can be a man of God, a man from God, a man possessing the nature of God, a man doing the will of God, a man behaving as God or 
ordain it. Listen to this. Christ's life showed me how and enabled me to do it. You see, the, the incapacitation of the law. The law may show you what you should do, but the law does not enable you to do it. The law may show you what you must not do, but the law will not give you power not to do it. In fact, what the law does is to tell you not to do it and set trap for you and put you in such condition and under pressure to push you to do it, knowing full well that the nature in man is so weak to obey the law. And the law took advantage of that and sin gain entrance through it and destroy men. I will talk about it as we proceed. But I am reading the foreword first. I am trying to sensitize you. I am trying to prime you for you to understand what we have come to look at about this issue of um, the gospel and religion. Now, can you take this? However, many people still depend on religion. And it could be that you are also depending on activities that can only regulate what you do, but not who you are. What can only put a rope on your neck and tie you, preventing you from a full-scale expression of who you are. But who you are remains intact. What a deceit. What a miserable life. What religion does is simply to tie you down, scare you, threaten you with consequences of your action yet will not empower you to live right. But Paul said, look, Christ's life showed me how and that same Christ's life enabled me to do it. That's what faith is. That's what the gospel is. And this is, this is beyond religion. Religion can't come here at all. It is, it is lack of understanding for any man to think that Christianity is a religion. It's not. I tell you it's not. You may ask me, so what it is? Just, just, just follow. Just follow. We will get to a point where we could call it a name. If you want. But by the time we are through to that point, you yourself will have an understanding that if you are a Christian, you are not a religionist. And you ought not to be actually if you are not. Now, can I read, can I read, can I read further? But the bitter truth is that since no religion can remove sin from man, not even Christianity, if practiced as a religion, then no religion can take anyone to God. All who depend on religion to access or pacify God will be disappointed. Just as those who tried it in the past were. Paul said, how do we know that we did not attain this height by rule keeping? but only through personal faith in Jesus Christ. How do we know? He said it's because we tried it. We had the best system of rules the world has ever seen in place. When we tried and it didn't work, and we became convinced that no human being can please God by self-improvement. When we came to that point, we believe in Jesus as the Messiah. We believe in Jesus as to put what is lacking in our lives in it so that our account can be balanced be before God. And when we did that, we were set right before God. Not by trying to obey the law. 
And I'm not saying that it meant that when a man is a Christian, he becomes lawless. Actually, he operates a law that is higher than the law that men are put in place. Can I just read as I conclude this forward? It is therefore a wise thing for us to take a closer look at the issue of the gospel and religion to lay all doubt that may be in our minds to rest. This study which may appear to look as though we veered off, we veered off what we were pushing before. It's not actually a digression. It is just to bring um, to rest all doubt that could surface in your heart or possibly be there right now, making you to think that you are also uh, practicing a religion or I am inviting you to come to change your religion from what uh, your religion is into Christian religion. No, far be it from me that I will be asking you to leave a religion that never helped you into another religion that will not help you. No, I won't do that because I know the futility in religion. It does not help. It didn't help me either. I had practiced Christianity as a religion before. It never brought help. And there are people who are Christians, so to speak, today who are struggling with sin because they have Taking Christianity as a religion is not. I tell you, it's not. Can I just look at faith? The main foundation. This is interesting for me. And I think we should take a cozy look at it together. I will read from here. I will read some passages of the Bible. And I will see how I can manage the time that we have left for this, um, for this study. Faith, the main foundation. The records of the Bible show that early men like Abel, Enoch, and Noah, who had a correct relationship with God, did not practice any religion. Go and check. None of these men premised his relationship with God on religion. They all worked with God by faith. And I'd like you to come with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. I'm going to read verses 4 to 7. Of course, if we have time, we can read the entire chapter. But this time, I just want to read verses 4, 5, 6, and 7. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. This is simple. By faith, not by religion. Two people were involved here. There was a man called Cain. And here was Abel. The two of them were born by the same parent. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. It made me to think that the, the sacrifice of Cain was also an excellent sacrifice. But the sacrifice of Abel was more excellent. So what made the sacrifice of Abel more excellent. Some people said it's because he brought an animal that, that had blood. It's okay. Some people said 
the sacrifice of Cain was not acceptable to God because he brought some bad yam and bad cocoa yam or because um, what he brought were product from the ground that God had already cursed. I don't know all of that. Maybe, maybe not. What I know or what I think I know is what I'm reading here. I am reading here that by faith, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. So I am, I am tempted to think that um, Cain offered his sacrifice by religion. To him, it was a religious activity. Though excellent, but not excellent enough, not excelling enough for God to accept it. But by faith, not by religion, by faith, simple faith in God, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. And the Bible said, look, God testifying of his gift, of his sacrifice, that even now, Abel was dead, yet speaketh. That sacrifice that he brought by faith is still speaking. He never practiced religion he walked by faith. What he did was by faith. Not by a commandment that is written in a particular book. Not by constitution. By faith. By faith. Now can I read verse 5? By faith, Enoch was translated. That he should not see death. And was not found. Because... God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now look at it. By faith, Enoch was translated. Not by religion. So if you are thinking about rapture, can I tell you? And somebody is telling you, you will not be raptured if you don't do this, if you don't do this, if you don't do this. You are wasting your time because Enoch was not raptured by works. He was raptured by faith. Religion will only cause rupture in your life. It won't bring you rapture. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So what made him to lead a life pleasing to God was by faith, not by religion. Christianity is not religion. It's faith in Christ Jesus. And if any man is going to lead a life that will please God, a life that God will open his heart to, a life that heavens will open when he dies or when he trumpets sound, that life must be by faith. I say to you, by faith. Can I read verses, verses 6 and 7? I see to quickly bring an interjection. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Not without the law, not without the works of the law, not without religion, without faith, it is impossible. Don't think about it. It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that God is. He who comes to God must first believe that God exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Permit me to put it, uh, to add it, by faith. Those who seek him by faith. Because this scripture is talking about faith by faith. That this Bible is saying, without faith, it is impossible not that it is difficult it is not possible to please god everyone that i may read about here or i'm reading now they 
come, they came to that point in which God was pleased with them by faith. So even when the Lord God said of Jesus, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased, know it that it is by faith, not by religion. It is by faith. If your heart desire to please God, if your heart desire to walk circumspectly unto all pleasing, unto God, then you must walk by faith, not by religion. Not by a set of rule keeping. Not by self-improvement. It is by faith. Not by observation of certain things that are laid down by people. Men invention. Philosophies of men. It will not take you anywhere. It is only by faith. Can I read verse 7 unto you? Verse 7 says, By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen, I wish I could pour my heart onto you. I wish I could open my heart for you to understand what we're talking about. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet. I know you have not seen hell. And I know you are saying there is no hell anywhere. I know you have not seen heaven. And you are saying there is no heaven anywhere. I know you have not seen God. And you are saying there is no God anywhere. I understand you. It is only because you lack faith. When faith comes, by faith, even when there was nothing that, that could help Noah to imagine what God was saying, by faith, when he was one of God, he moved with fear. He built an ark. And my Bible tells me that it was to the saving of his house. And it was by that action, by that action, he condemned the world. So I'm asking, you know, when, is, when the Bible says he condemned the world, I'm, I'm asking, so how? I realized that that was how Cain condemned Abel. Others were acting based on religion, based on rules and regulations, based on the constitution and systems of government Put in place, but Noah moved by faith. He was building an ark where there was no water. Act of faith. That's religion will not tell you that. Religion deals with facts and figures. Religion will tell you let's face reality. But here was a man. He was one of rain. He was one of flood. And he was building an ark for many years by faith. And the Bible said, that was how he became the heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. This righteousness that you are looking for, this righteousness which I interpret to be right choice, making right choices all the time is righteousness. Now, this righteousness, which is very elusive, can only be obtained by faith. In fact, Noah became the heir of that righteousness, not by works, not by the law, not by religion, but by faith. I have signed off religion. I have signed on. It is faith. It is either faith or not. In fact, the Bible says anything that is not of faith is sin. That's the game next week, by God's grace. Because it is not about running to breast the tape. It's about looking at every matter that must be looked at very diligently, painstakingly too, so that we can catch everything that we need to catch in this matter. Can I read further, please? However, by the time Abraham was born, imagine nations of the earth then had found a new romance with religion, and all men completely veered off the path of faith into the path of religion, which led them nowhere else apart from making them drift away from God. And sadly, Abraham was part of that error. Now you may be wondering, oh, but Abraham was the father of faith. He didn't start as the father of faith. He was first a son of perdition. 
he also followed religion of his forebears. He was also an idol worshiper before God showed him mercy. He was part of that error. By the time men like Abel, men like Enoch, men like Noah left the scene, men began to form system of life, systems of government, democracy, communism, all sorts. And I tell you, all of these are religion. Democracy is a religion. Communism is a religion. It's a religion. When you say, I don't believe in God, but I believe in democracy, you believe in something. You believe in something. You are a religious person, and religion cannot, and it has not taken any man to anywhere, can't take you anywhere to. So you don't need to try it at all. It, it, for me, I just feel, when Paul said, we have tried it, I, I just remember that that, that was how uh, Solomon also tried it. He married 700 wives and 300 concubines, making 1,000. And at the end of it, he said, all is vanity. He had tried it for you. Should you try it at all? Will you get anything better than what Solomon got? Let me read. God, being rich in mercy, pulled that he saved Abraham out of that human invention and craziness called religion and graciously led him into the right path which is walking by faith like others before him. That will make me to read two passages very quickly. I like to read Genesis chapter number 12. I'll read verses 1 and 2 and then I'll read Hebrews chapter 11 verses 8 to 12. Genesis chapter 12. If you are there, I want to read it from the old King James translation. Now, the Lord had said, take note of that phrase, had said. It's critical. The Lord had said. Not that the Lord said, had said. This is not, it means this is not the first time the Lord will be speaking to this man. The Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Now this is God speaking to Abraham. God has said to Abraham, get thee out of thy country from thy kindred and from thy father's house and you have to go to a land that I will show you. Can I read verses 8 to 12 of Hebrews chapter 11 right now? And let us see Abraham also, when he, he heeded God, when he obeyed, when he responded to that instruction from the Lord, let's see how he began to live, whether he also practiced religion. Look at the word of God. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after received for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. You see, religion will show you what you will gain if you do something. What you will lose if you don't do something. But here was a man. God did not show him where he was going. God only spoke to him. God did not lure him out of the religion of his forebears into another religion. No. God asked him to leave religion and to come to faith. And when he was going to respond, he responded by faith. By faith. Not by face. Religion shows on your face. But it is not by face. You show your face in churches. You show your face in different places. It is not by face. It is by faith. It is not by age. It is by faith. That's the word of God. Look at the word of God. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place where he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed, 
and he went out. And, no, and not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. By faith, not by religion. As in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacle with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Now, Noah was heir of, of, of righteousness. Abraham also became an heir. When you see an heir, it means that he is a son. He had become a son. Son of somebody. Somebody is called righteousness. He is the owner of righteousness. It's righteousness himself. Noah became heir of righteousness, but by faith. Now, here again, I see Abraham becoming the heir of the promise, along with Jacob, along with Isaac, by faith. Can I read verse, verse, verse 10? I'm going to verse, verse 12. For he looked for a city which had foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also, Sarah, his wife, has herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. It's not by age. It's by faith. I told you. Now listen to the word of God. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead. So many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. By faith, she receives strength to conceive. By faith, she receives strength to be delivered of a baby. By faith, a woman who gave birth to a child now had children, has children innumerable, like this dust at the shore of the sea. By faith, not by religion, Religion did not prosper Abraham. God could not have asked him to leave religion and come into religion. No, God does not behave that way. No, 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 no. Can I read from the outline? I am not sure I'll be able to conclude this part one today, looking at the time. But let me push a little. Joshua. Testifying of the salvation of Abraham said in Joshua chapter 24, verses 2 to 3. Reading King James from the, from the outline. Maybe I should read it from here. Maybe I should, let me just read from the outline to save time. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in all time. Even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Narco, and they served other gods. So you see that Abraham also practiced religion before he began to walk by faith. He served idols, other gods. Listen to the word of God. And I took your father, this is God speaking, and I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood. And led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. I took your father from the other side. The other side was the side of religion. My prayer is that God will also take you from that other side. Because that other side will not lead you to anywhere that is good. That other side will lead you to somewhere else that may make you to gnash your teeth eternally. You need to respond and follow God who is calling you by this message that dump religion. Come to embrace faith. It is by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. In fact, Jesus said, when the Son of Man shall come, shall I find faith on earth? Because I will not be looking for faces of people in churches, in, in church halls. I'll be looking for faith. Faith is the identity, identification mark. Faith is, is life. So the just shall live by faith. So the, the life of the just is faith. 
the, the life of the justified is faith. Only men who live by faith are just and justified. That's the word of God. If you practice religion, you will carry a burden that you will never carry through. You won't. Paul said we tried it. Peter, I read it to you last week. He said this is a, this is a yoke our fathers and we ourselves could not bear. Why do we want to put it upon these Gentiles who are turned to Christ? Why do you want to do that? We know that we didn't succeed. We tried. It never worked. So why are we pretending as if it's working? People just want to celebrate you, make you to look like they're melder. They want to show off, show you off that when I told him that he should stop doing this, that's when he stopped doing it. And so they tell, we have affected these people. We, 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 we taught them how to dress. I'm not saying you should dress in a manner that is unbefitting Christ. That's not what I'm talking about. But you see, what we are dealing with here is beyond religion. This is faith. Faith changes a man from inside. When a man is changed from inside, you'll see a change outside that is unforced. <laughs> Unforced li li looking, I mean, taking the uh, um, the message uh, translation. Unforced redeems of grace. It is faith that teaches a man that. Can I just read a little? I should be looking for a place to 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 bath this ship now, so that we can anchor it, and next week we return. And take off from wherever we are going to stop. It's obvious I can't finish this outline this, this day. Now, can I read this? If those other gods, which Terah and his ancestors served, and which Abraham also served faithfully for some time, could save Abraham or help him to serve God better or make him a better person, God will have left him to continue to serve them. Terah, who seemed to hold onto those idols more tenaciously and in defiance of God's beckoning to leave religion and come to faith, died helplessly in his religion of idol worship in Haran. And he was supposed to go by and in faith to Canaan. Can I ask you, please, turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 11. And I want to read the last two verses there. Verses 31 and 32. Look at the word of God. And Terah took Abraham, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abraham's wife. And they went forth with them from all of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran, and dwelt there. Why did they leave the awe of the Chaldees? I ask. I have reason to think that this must be why verse chapter 12 says, the Lord has said, the Lord had said, they had a message. Leave this religion. Leave this idol worship. I will take you to a place where you walk, by, you walk with me by faith. He took off. But midway, he Paused, he stopped at Haran and he went back into his idol worship. It was in Haran he died. It was in Haran he was buried. But he left all of the Chaldees and the destination was Canaan. So you, you, you will agree with me that Canaan was, permit me, was, was, was Terah's project. It belonged to Terah. Terah took Lot. Terah took Abraham, Terah took Sarai, along with himself, and they were journeying to Canaan. But somewhere along the line, permit me, possibly they started by faith, and they wanted to complete their journey by religion. He died in Haran. 
Now, many people who started out by faith, they received Christ by faith, they were saved by faith, but now they are introducing religion as if by religion they can make perfect what started by faith. Many of them will also die in Haran. That's the truth. If it started by faith, it must be sustained by faith. It must be completed by faith. That is the word of God. I say to you, Christianity is not religion. And that's why we are dealing with the gospel and religion. Now, can I, can I, can I just read on now? I want to, I'll just read this passage, this paragraph, and then we'll close for today. Now, religion which is equivalent to idol worship comes with unbearable burden unto their inventors. Do not be part of it. He who makes bears. What God makes, he bears. And what you make, you also bear. Can I read two passages? And I'm going to close. Habakkuk. I, I'm, I'm too sure um, you, you, you are not um, Habakkuk chapter, chapter 2. I'll read verses 18, 19. I wish I could read 20, but let me just read 18, 19. What profited the graven image that the maker thereof had graven it? The molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols. I don't have time, but please think, just think as I'm, as I'm reading. Verse 19, woe unto him that seeth to the wood, awake, to the dumb stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. This wood, this stone, is decorated with gold, is decorated with silver. It looks beautiful, but there is no life inside. Religion is a dumb idol, decorated with so much fanfare, decorated with so much glamour, Yet, there is no life in it. Can I just read Isaiah chapter 46? Beautiful passage. I'm sure, or I hope, you also know this passage. I just want to read a few verses there. Verses 1 to 7. Time will not permit me to deal with all the verses. But I just want to draw one small matter out. And then we'll conclude, we'll pause there today. And by the grace of God, when we return under God next week, we'll take off from that point. Now, look at verse 1 to 7, the book of Isaiah chapter 46. I, I, wish, I wish I have simpler translation here that I can read. But let me read King James first. Bell boweth down, Nebo stupid. Their idols were upon the beasts and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy laden. They are a burden to the weary beast. Now think about it. Bell, Nabo, they are being crushed under the weight of idols. Even the animals they were using to carry these idols, they are also being crushed. Weight of idols that they made is killing them. Listen to this. They stoop. They bow down together. They could not deliver the body, but themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me. Now take note of that. Which are carried by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to who are ears will I carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and I will deliver you. Now listen to God. 
God said, I made you. And because I made you, I will carry you. Because I made you, I will bear you. Because I, make, I made you, I will deliver you. Even to your old age, when your head is white, I will be there to carry you. Now, when you make something, you must carry it all. I tell you. So people will make idols, and then they will have to carry the idols. Now, they make idols and worship idols. Idols that they, they, they made cannot carry them. They were the one that made the idols, and yet they will carry the same idol. But God said, I made you, I carry you. When God makes your marriage, he carries that, mas that marriage. When God makes your business, he carries it. Even to the old age, he will not shirk from his responsibility. Can I read? To whom will I liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like the lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith and he maketh it a god. They fall down, yea, they worship. They bear him up the shoulder. They carry him and set him in his place. And he standeth from his place shall he not remove. Yea, one shall cry unto him, yet can he not answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Now, because time is not there, and I want to, I want to round off here. Now, you see, you see the, the predicament of people who are, who are inventors of religion. They will be the one to carry it on their head. Once you make something, it, is, it becomes your responsibility to carry it. You know how you are carrying your marriage now? Because you made it. You know why you are carrying your own life now? Because you made it. You have to carry it because you are the maker of it. God said, I made, if I make something, I will carry. I am not an irresponsible God. If you want God to bear you upon his own shoulder, then let him make you. He makes, he bears. If you make, you will bear. Men made religion, so they bear religion. Religion does not bear. Religion does not help. Religion adds burden onto the burden of people who created or who invent it. And my, my prayer this day, as I want to pause, we, have not, we are not there yet. We have not even finished this introductory part of, 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 Christ, of the gospel and religion Yet, I feel I should pause here. If I have to deal with everything here, I'll be here another one, two hours. And I don't think I should, um, I should be that callous, not to be mindful of the data you are using. Now, here and now, I want to pause. The truth of the matter is, religion will add weight unto you. It won't bear you. Religion will not help you to move anything. It is only Christ's life that shows us how to do it and enables us to do it. And it is called faith. You wonder how could a man walk with God? It was by faith. Enoch walked with God by faith. How could a man be disobedient? Go and make an act. And he moved and he was doing it. No pattern, no reference, no nothing. And he was doing it. And you wonder, how can I also obey God? By faith. How do I give God good sacrifice? By faith. How do I obtain a testimony that my life is pleasing to God? By faith. Those men did not do it by bold faith. They did it by faith. Just trusting in God. Trusting in the ability of God to get it done. He shows you. He enables you. Bow your head. Would you, like to, would you like to open up your heart and tell God how frustrating religion has been? Religion has flogged you here and there, flung you here and there. You are not better. You are not better. You carry it on your face. You carry it on your body. You carry it everywhere. Yet you are still struggling. You are still a slave of sin. You have not been delivered from sin. You have not been delivered from fornication. You are not being delivered from lust. You are not being delivered from, from greed, avarice. You have not been delivered from corruption. You have not been delivered from anger. You have not been delivered from fights. You can keep, you can keep malice for years. 
and yet you are a dickness. You are a dicky. You are a pastor. You are an affair. And yet you are a ritualist. You don't like it. You hate it. Yet you lack power to say no to it. It's because you are applying religion. You have not tried faith. Men who left their homeland and their father's house and they walked out of everything they had in that place and walked into a new life. They did it by faith. By faith. We would like to tell the Lord that you are tired of religion. You are tired of touch not, taste not, don't trust it, don't try this, don't eat this, don't drink this. I'm not saying you should be a careless eater. I'm not saying you should be a careless drinker. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Eh, but you have tried obeying those rules Yet you notice that rules keeping never brought, never made you a better person. But today, you want to come, you want to leave religion. Even Christianity as a religion, you want to move to the side of faith. You said that these men never practice any religion. They practice faith. They walk by faith. I also want to stop being a law man, a religion man. I want to be faith man. I want to be God's man. Lord, please have come in simple faith. Save me from these struggles. Save me from this helplessness. Save me from this embarrassment and this disgrace that I suffer every day. I come to embrace Christ. You are my Messiah. You are the only one that can rescue me from the power of sin. Lord Jesus, come to rescue me today. Save me. Save me from sin. Save me from myself. Save me from my helplessness. Thank you, Father. Would you like to bring this prayer point to close now? In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Eternal Father, I want to thank you for what you have done. Thank you for this great mercy. Lord, I've only preached this by faith. I'm trusting that by faith it will become fruitful. By faith it will bring illumination. By faith it will bring translation, transformation in the name of Jesus. By faith, people will come to accept and embrace this truth and quit the life of religion, the life of struggle, the life of there is no life there. Lord, and they will come into the tearing of life. Lord, through faith in Christ Jesus, please do it. Help us, Lord, to preserve this in our hearts. That when we come back together on Monday, 6 p.m. next week, we can continue this. Thank you, Father. For we have prayed with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. I must thank you for being part of this um, Bible study today. I'd like you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, Shegu Mario or Portland House Christian Mission, and click the notification button. The helpline is there. You can just uh, call me um, 0807-270-4630. Um, that it will be a great moment for us to to discuss. And you can send me an email, shegmaria at gmail.com. Our um, discipleship classes, especially in Lagos, runs on second Saturdays and fourth Saturdays. There are phone numbers there. You can call Mike. You can call Femi. You want to make inquiry. Nine o'clock in the morning, second Saturday and fourth Saturday, the classes will be on. We're trusting the Lord that by next month, the class on Lagos Island will be opened. And so for those of you on, 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 on the island, you can also be part of that class. God bless you. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, we'll have discipleship class. And it's also going to be live streamed this way. May the Lord bless you and keep you blameless till the return of Jesus. Thank you.